Wow, will you just look at that? That down there is Silverton, Colorado, an early Colorado mining camp, and that's where we're headed. In fact, that's where we're going to be walking today. Howdy, I'm Dr. J, and today you and I are going to get to rescue some history right here in Silverton, Colorado. So come on, let's go. When you think of an old west town, what do you think of? <coughs> Western movies would have us believe that old west towns were made up of drab buildings in hues of gray and brown. You know, with broken windows and squeaky hinges. Well, I'm here to tell you that that couldn't be further from the truth. Here's the reality of the situation. A successful mining camp would have started off with tents but then they would have been replaced with log structures. And then when the real money started rolling in, they were replaced with Victorian architecture. Now, unlike many other Old West mining camps that had a big fire at some point in their existence, none of that happened in Silverton. As a result, most of the buildings in this town are original. And most of those buildings have been lovingly restored to their original, colorful, beauty. Situated at 9,300 feet elevation, today Silverton is a summer mecca for those wanting cooler weather as well as the opportunity to experience all the outdoor activities that Silverton has to offer. Hiking, camping, and of course ATVing. And as you can see, this is a town that apparently never sleeps. Located just 50 miles north of Durango, Colorado, an old west town of some historical significance, Silverton is easily accessible by car, at least in the summer. <laughs> However, some choose instead to travel by rail on the historic Durango and Silverton narrow gauge railroad. In so doing, they get to experience some of Colorado's most spectacular scenery, all the while being pulled by a vintage steam locomotive. In front of me is historic Blair Street. Its colorful history, and by color I do mean red lights, is worthy of some further examination. The raucous goings on on this here street, right up to 1948, read like a movie script. Only better. For more information on the history of Blair Street, Get yourself a copy of the book, The Bordellos of Blair Street. Green Street is just one block over. Come on, let's go. Today, Green Street is where all the shops, restaurants, and saloons are located, <laughs> which brings me to why I like to visit Silverton. Are you curious? Have I piqued your interest? Don't touch that dial. In 1883, Silverton, Colorado was remote. Supplies had to be packed in here over treacherous mountain passes by wagon. With no railroad and hardly any roads, one would have been risking their life to even try and get here. And once having arrived, it would have been equally dangerous to even try and leave. Oh yes. And the winters here are brutal. Many of the early settlers literally froze to death. Everything changed with the arrival of the railroad in July of 1882. And one of the reasons I was first drawn here was one of the early passengers on that train. 
in mid-February 1883, who should step down off of a train onto this very platform but Wyatt Earp himself. Silverton, Colorado was just one of many small towns throughout New Mexico and Colorado where Josephine and Wyatt chose to settle, if only for a brief time, following that their gunfight on, on Fremont Street. It's no surprise that Wyatt would end up here. After all, Wyatt always followed the money, wherever it was. As was his habit, having just arrived in town, Wyatt soon landed a job running the gaming concession at the newly renovated Arlington Saloon. The Arlington Saloon building is long gone, having been replaced in 1901 by the Cole Hoffman building right behind me. This side of this building actually sits on the original foundation of the Arlington Saloon. Think about this. In 1883, Wyatt Earp was dealing faro right here. Wow. So much of what we think of as our Old West history actually took place over a very brief period of time. The Pony Express, for example, only ran for 18 months. And the Earp Brothers, subject of countless movies, television shows, and books, you remember them, they were only in Tombstone, Arizona, 28 months. Likewise, Wyatt Earp's time right here in Silverton, Colorado was equally brief. Four months tops. Now, he might have stayed a bit longer had it not been for the arrival of his friend Bat Masterson with an urgent request that Wyatt accompany him back to Dodge City to handle a situation that had developed. But that's another story. Silverton, Colorado, a little gem with a big, big history. This is a place where you can step off a steam train and back in time and literally walk in the footsteps of the likes of Wyatt Earp and Bat Masterson. Or you might decide to try your hand at gold panning. You know, there's still plenty of gold and silver in them there hills. Or you might just choose to take in all this natural beauty that surrounds us here. The only thing that's missing is you. This here is Boots. You probably remember her from some of the earlier videos. She's now six months old, and she's our little traveling companion. To experience more of what the West has to offer, I'm inviting you to stay tuned. What do you say, Boots? Are you ready to go? Come on, Boots. Let's start walking. You've been walking the American West with Dr. J. Please remember to like and subscribe. And thanks for walking with us.